Welcome everyone. We are very glad that you could join us today. And Robert, how are you doing today? I'm well. It's been a tough week, but uh, I'm mm. well. And yourself? Yeah, We've I, had a tough week together, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had. <laughs> Crazy, running around. It's like there's, no, there's not enough time in a day. Not enough time in a day, exactly. But we survived, mm. we're here, and we're excited for this one again. Very excited. I know we tend to, you know, we tend to expand on questions asked and, uh, and magnify the question, but that's only to, to provide solid context. Mm. But, uh, and, and we've just continued down this path and mm. it's, it seems to be working, you know, yeah. to create a little bit more, more context and yeah. Uh, yeah, broaden the, the spectrum on mm. the questions that are asked. So, yeah. Yeah, cover a few extra bases in the question. Yeah, yeah. Where, where does it start? Where does it end? We can't just always answer the question as it is. We need to provide that context, yeah. Mm. So, just before we get into it, will you <clears throat> do a quick prayer for us? Yeah, sure. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can be here again today and uh, share in your word. Lord, uh, give us an open mind uh, for what we are going to share today and uh, allow, we, c we can do nothing without you, Lord. So guide us in this discussion and uh, help us to provide the truth that is so important for this dying world. We pray it in your name. Amen. Before we get into the video, you guys m may wonder what all of these decorations are here. <laughs> and it's a Interesting aroma in the room today. <laughs> hey? uh, you'll have to use your imagination because... <laughs> <laughs> few things here. And there are mugs and... Uh, what is this? Yeah, but we are going to share this very soon. It's part of the discussion today. Yeah. Yeah. So before we do all of that, let's jump into the video. Hi, Robert and Marlo. Thanks for starting your uh, program, What is Truth? And asking the all-important question. Uh, my question to you today is regarding the time of no buy, no sell, do you um, agree that that is still during the time of probation or do you think it's after probation is closed? Because during that time, and your advice for people who are, uh, are on, have chronic medical conditions and take a lot of medicine and have a lot of uh, medical therapy, during that time period, they won't be able to buy any medicine or go to the hospital. And do you have any thoughts about uh, people completely trusting their physical uh, illnesses uh, and disabilities to God during that time period uh, because they won't be able to participate in the healthcare system uh, or receive the mark of the beast. Uh, thanks for answering my question. Thanks, Philip. That was an interesting question. And I think there's a lot of people that mm. has the same type of question. Yeah. What are they going to do with car payments? What will they have to do when it comes to property tax and all yeah. of those things. What can we expect, mm. you know, in this time? And I mean, he, he rightly asked, you know, when is this time? Mm. You know, when are we going to be prohibited from buying and selling? Mm. You know, is it in the, in the little time of trouble? Is it in the great time of trouble? Yes, and there's not a lot of biblical details regarding mm. This, mm. this question. Um, and we would have to break it down a bit, mm. you know, look at uh, quite, a, quite a bit of uh, spirit of prophecy will be, will be used today mm. to expound on this. Um, but I think, yeah, let's, let's see what the Bible has to say. Let's see what spirit of prophecy has to mm. say. And let's also use logic yeah. in this regard. Okay, so let's read Revelation 13, verse 16 to 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So we have the, the mark of the beast introduced here. Mm. And if you do not accept, the, if you don't receive the mark of the beast and you reject it, then... Mm there will be an issue. There will be no buying or selling for you mm. as a person. Yeah, and for a lot of people, it will get a lot harder if you don't accept the mark. Exactly. So there's a, there's a faith element here. Mm. Um, and when, when we look, so we, we're looking at when will this be? Will it be before or will it be after the close of probation? To answer his first question, um, 
In Prophets and Kings, it reads, Satan says, for fear of wanting food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. Satan's mm -hmm. words. So, so, yeah, so want of food and clothing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still a decision that can be made here, as, it's, as it mentioned in the, in the verse, as it read in the verse. So, this cannot be in, in the time of great trouble where, one, where, where you cannot make a decision anymore. Mm -hmm. It has mm -hmm. to be in the little time of trouble where a decision <clears throat> can still be made, where deception is still running deep, and where you can still accept or reject yeah. the mark of the beast. Yeah, where you still have a choice. Yeah. Are you going to have it easier or is it going to be a more difficult road? Yeah. Do yeah. I compromise? Do I cling to God? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a nice depiction on the next slide. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, I'm not going to go through this whole graph. You know, this is basically the last day events uh, depiction. And uh, you get, you have the 1798 there, which is the 1260 day prophecy, the 1844, which is the 2300 days prophecy. And uh, you have the beginning of the papal wound being healed. That is uh, Mussolini, where he gave the beast power, you know, power once again. Mm -hmm. And then you have the, the shaking time. And within that time, the mark of the beast is going to uh, present itself. You know, the second mm -hmm. beast, the church and state and all of that are going to join. And then you're going to have the mark of the beast period over there. And then you see a little time of trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the most logic place where, where the no buying, no selling is going to appear. Yeah. Okay? Mm. So, and the next step is the close of probation. So once it, reads, once it reaches close of probation, this is where let the filthy be filthy still, let the righteous be righteous still. Mm. And uh, where you have made your decision already. Um, and this is where our bread and our water will be sure. You know, during the great time of trouble, yeah. and no preparation will have to be made mm -hmm. in this time. <laughs> so, so that is that is yeah. That's where that's where spirit of prophecy in the Bible depicts the um, no buying, no selling period would would enter. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things happening in that slide, and mm. we are very close to that time where the mark will be implemented. Mm. Yeah, very close to where, to the question that's being asked. Yep. So it's important that we cover this. Yeah, there's there's not a lot of time left and people need to be aware of what's coming and then also need to be informed as to mm. what choices they need to make. Yeah. So let's see if we can help a little bit yeah. with this. Yeah. yeah. And we read in the Desire of Ages, why will buying and selling be prohibited for God's people? Mm. So it says, in the last great conflict of the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off because they refuse to break his law in obedience to earthly powers. They will be forbidden to buy or sell. So it's just explaining what the Bible is saying. Mm. Just again, just yeah. to accentuate it. Yeah, and, and that one part just stands out for me. Mm. Every earthly support mm. cut off. So we won't be able to use our riches we gathered here on earth mm -mm. to help us in the situation. We won't have, it will be as if you had nothing. You yeah. know, you, your mindset, you need to have a new mindset. You mm. know, where do, you, where do we get our water from? Where do we yeah. get our food from? Mm. You know, the mass marts and the, and the, the municipalities, they mm. all provide, you know, all electricity, all of this yeah. provided. So, so, yeah, we need to mm. start thinking about these things. Yeah. yeah, what's going to happen if I can't just walk into the shop and buy something? Yeah, it's so natural huh? mm. to walk in and just go buy some. Oh, I yeah. need this. Yeah. So, we also read in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5. Uh, it says, the time is coming when we cannot sell at any price. The sure. decree will soon go forth, prohibiting men to buy or sell of any man save him that hath the mark of the beast. So it's mm -hmm. just to confirm mm -hmm. we will not be able yeah, to buy or sell. 
And we don't know how that's going to be implemented and uh, whether it's got to do with CBDC, your central yeah. banking, you know, digital currency, or how, but obviously mm. there's a lot of movements that is making us aware <laughs> of things happening. So we're not going to go into detail. I'm just putting that out there. Mm. Yeah. And it's so easy for us to miss this mm. because Satan keeps us busy with anything he can and he yeah. places it in front of us. He gives us an opportunity to go out, to have fun. And just like that, you miss what's yeah. happening in the world. It's, uh, we have to be watchmen on the walls, walls mm. of Zion. We have to see the events as they are unfolding, the tribulation ahead of us. Mm. And we need to warn mm. inside of yeah. the church, you know, inside of the walls mm. of Zion. And I, I yeah, I, I don't see a lot of this happening at the moment. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And the Bible tells us exactly what is going to take place. Mm. And if we don't take heed to it, we're not going to realize what the deceiver is busy with. Yeah. And then we will be deceived. And, and they don't, they don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear about warnings. Don't mm. tell me about these apocalyptic things, you know, just tell me about the love of Christ. And we've mm. dealt with this before. I'm just reiterating that it's, uh, it's sad that, you know, Satan can use something special mm. and then deprive you of what is very necessary, if that makes sense. In other words, the love of Christ is obviously everything we mm. need, but it's, but it doesn't take away the fact that we need to be watch, watchful and prayerful. Yeah. If you just put it into perspective, how important it is to share these warnings. Mm. What if you had the opportunity to tell them there's a law coming and the next thing the law comes and they don't know about it? Do they know that they'll be held accountable for not mm. telling them? Ezekiel 33. It, it, correct. And, and uh, I think about that a lot. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm going to go back into the shop. I'm going to go talk to this person. He was asking questions and I was too busy. Mm. I'm going to go back into that shop and I'm going to speak to him, <laughs> you know, get his number, <laughs> just do something. No, it's, it's, it's important. And, and it's so easy to say, ah, the next time I'll do it. Yeah. I'll speak to this person. I'm coming to town again next week. Mm. Then I'll see him and then I'll, then I'll tell him. Yeah. But what if he's not there the next time? Yeah. No, it's every, every life is precious. Mm. You know, I always think about the, the hundred sheep and the one is lost. The 99, he's going to leave them and he's going to go look for the, for the one that's lost because that's more precious. I'm not saying he's more precious. I'm saying at that point, because he is lost, it is more important for him to, to collect them. Yeah. Are we doing the same? Yeah. So, so now we get to the part, how do we, how will God's people prepare for this time, mm -hmm. you know, ahead of us? And uh, we read... Let's read again. I mean, there's going to be a lot of uh, reading today, but I think it's important. Selected messages. Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions. For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. We should now begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again. Get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded closely together and where you'll be free from the interference of enemies. Mm. Hmm. So this is just <clears throat> the start of the question, uh, F Philip, for you as well. You know, it's you asked what will happen with those with chronic issues mm. in the last days, you know, and... Uh, and yes, there, there are you know, two answers to that that we'll get to, but we need to do whatever we can mm. to prepare to be healthy you know, and to safeguard ourselves from diseases mm. you know, <clears throat> and, and famine. We need to prepare. We need to start preparing. And the first step is moving out of the cities. Yeah. And we have examples of it in the Bible as well. Yeah. If you look at Lot... God told them to get out of the city. Correct. If you look at the destruction of Jerusalem, yeah. Jesus said, "Won't the people get out of the cities?" Yeah, and move. And and how many of them moved? Just a, mm. a fraction of them yeah. actually went out of Jerusalem, and the rest were stuck inside. Yeah. All the Christians who listened to the warning, yeah, who heeded, survived. 
Yeah, exactly. Mm. So in selected messages, once again, we read, it is not God's will that his people shall settle in the cities where there is constant turmoil and confusion. Their children should be spared this for the whole system is demoralized by the hurry and rush and noise. Mm. So it just shows, I mean, so here's one element which, I mean, the cities and the turmoils and the, the busyness and all of that causes stress. Mm. And we've seen medically, we, we know that stress causes a lot of, I guess, sicknesses, you know, even heart attacks and so forth. And, and uh, it's not good for us. We need to be in fresh air, you know, and where we can make provision, we'll get to that, but we need to be in a space where we can breathe fresh yeah. air and, and exercise and things yeah. like that. At the Adventist home, the cities are filled with temptation. We should plan our work in such a way as to keep our young people as far as possible from this contamination. Yeah. So it's also been said that sin, if you're entrenched in sin, causes disease. You know, I've read that many times. So we have, to, we have to get out of temptation because no matter the temptation, whether it's whatever it is, alcohol, licentiousness, uh, drugs, or whatever the temptation is, it all causes mm. disease or sickness in, in some way, whether it's mental yeah. or whether it's physical. Mm. Oh. Yeah. And I know there will be a lot of people who's going to say, but we can't afford it. We yeah. have no way of getting out of the city. Yeah. And all of those things, but that is where we need to ask God. Mm. Pray, we should lead pray, the way. Pray. Yep. Yeah. And if God wants you to move, He will open the way for you. Yeah. But you need to be willing. There we go. You need to put your feet into the Jordan. There we go. You can't just say, Lord, is this where you want me to be? And then just stop with the whole process. Mm. Yeah, and if, if, you, if you are stuck, I mean, if, if you've prayed about it and you've, you've made supplication and you, you, you know, you've asked God for, for answers and nothing has been given you, then start. Then like, like you said, put your foot in the Jordan. Go onto your little balcony in your, in your little flat and start growing certain mm. things for yourself, you yes. know, uh, herbs or whatever. Yes. And, uh, and start doing that until you get another answer from the Lord mm. and you can move further from there. He wants to see us progress. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like he led the Israelites through the desert. Mm. They were willing to go wherever God led. So are we willing to go Some wherever God will lead? <laughs> Some, of <them. laughs> Some of them. It could have taken them 11 days to the promised land. It took them 40 years. <laughs> but agreed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so well, let's read on. The Lord has given some simple herbs of the field that at times are beneficial. And if every family were educated in how to use these herbs in case of sickness, much suffering might be prevented and no doctor need be called. Wow. These old fashioned simple herbs used intelligently would have recovered many sick who have died under drug medication. So this is comparing natural remedies, natural drugs, I guess, mm. with the drugs that they sell us out there. Mm. I'm not going to go into too much detail there, this, this episode, but yeah, it's, we need to start looking at, uh, at the, the natural remedies that mm. God provided for us. Yeah, and you'll be amazed mm. what effect it can have on your body. Yeah. No, the healing properties are, are almost endless. Mm. Oh, so we're gonna we're gonna start looking at this little tray here. Yeah, <laughs> tasting a few things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared for that one thing that we can drink on oh, camera. This, this one. Yeah, oh, we can try this out. Let's give it a little stir. Yeah, we read about that in the Bible. We do. Yes. What is it called? Um, it talks about as bitter as wormwood. As bitter as wormwood. Yes. <laughs> Let's start off with nasturtium. In Afrikaans, we call it kapperki blare, kapperki leaves. And it's this one. Let me just get it out here. It's this leaf. You all know it makes these little uh, yellow flowers, hey? orange mm. flowers, yellow flowers. Yeah. And you can, but yeah, let's read. Let's read about it. 
may have natural antibacterial and anti-inflammatory effects according to a number of studies. The essential oil, the extract from the flowers and leaves and the compounds isolated from various parts of these plants have natural antimicrobial, antifungal, hypotensive, expectorant, anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer effects. Mm. That is incredible. Antifungal, hypotensive, wow, in- anti-inflammatory. Mm. Study have shown that the leaves specifically possess natural antibiotic properties that may be able to help people coping with illnesses and infections, such as respiratory in- infections, congestion, coughs, bronchitis, and colds. In traditional herbal medicine, certain species are also used to treat urinary tract infections. <laughs> this one little leaf, eh? this one little thing, and this grows everywhere in South Africa, mm. probably around the world. It's everywhere and you just walk by. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to do these days. I look in my garden and I just, and I see a monkey eating that tree. One, one of the baboons were hurt. They, I think they were shot, he was shot and uh, he had a big wound. And uh, he was pulling at these leaves and he was just eating a copious amount. And then I Googled afterwards, what is this? And I used my little app and everything and it was a, it was a medicine for pain and for, for inflammation. Wow, I was like, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> so I'm trying to learn this, I'm still getting there. Um, and what's yeah. amazing is all of the positive effects you can get from this small plant. Yeah, yeah, exactly, from one little plant. Um, what do we have next? Olive leaf, Mm, okay, so olive leaf extract has long been part of a traditional medicine. Most of the potential benefits of olive leaf extract are said to come from one of its components, liropane. In addition to antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects, liropane is said to have anti-cancer, antibacterial and antiviral effects. Prof. Dr. Erdem Yesilada, head of Yeti Tepe University, Pharmacognosy and phytotherapy department explained, it has been experimentally proven that olive has anti-inflammatory, blood sugar lowering, blood pressure lowering, atherosclerosis preventing, blood lipid level lowering, bone loss repairing, antimicrobial, antioxidant and anti-cancer properties Etc. Etc. Those were big words. I don't actually know what atherosclerosis is, but anyway, um, yeah, it even heals that something you don't know about. It exactly. also heals. Yeah. So I know. I, I started doing this. I uh, you dry the the olive leaves and you hang it upside down and then you uh, you blend it. You make this mm-hmm. this whole mush of powdery um, substance and you you drink it and that's what we have in here today. Yeah, with the wormwood that we mentioned. <laughs> so it will be a good boost. It will, it will. We'll taste it now, it's gonna be great. <laughs> Olive leaf tea is more beneficial. So that's what we have here. As for the residence time in the body, Aluropane was found to reach its highest blood level in an average of 80 minutes after oral administration and is excreted from the body in 240 minutes. However, it was observed that the olive leaf extract preparations in liquid in the tea form are absorbed quite quickly, 23 minutes, while the absorption time in tablet form reaches uh, one and a half hours. Wow. Wow. So it's a much better form to drink this. And I've this has kept me going. This concoction here, before we went to Israel, remember, mm. I was quite ill and well, I was starting to feel the effects and I just, start, I just kept on drinking that with some of the other herbs that we'll be looking at and it really pulled me through. I haven't been sick till now. Wow. Yeah. So we're gonna taste it. Let's do it. Okay, let's try. <laughs> <laughs> let's just get away from the laptop here. I'll give you a nice one. Yeah, nice I don't pop. think it's necessary to fill the cup, but... <laughs> no, we'll drink it as we go along. They'll see us pulling our faces. I'll do the same. Mine is also half. Okay, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> ah, hey? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite bitter. I think my experience <laughs> is a little bit more than yours because yeah. I can already do it with a straight face. <laughs> yeah, mm. I've gotten used to the wormwood a bit, but... It is very it bitter. Is bitter. With the olive leaf mm. as well. 
Olive leaf is exceptionally um, bitter. And we did something with the youth at our uh, church the other day. Mm. So we read in um, Patriarchs and Prophets about the Passover and how that lamb was prepared with bitter herbs. Mm. So people don't normally think about that aspect of it. Yeah. They see it as a feast where everyone sits and they enjoy the meal no. and it's so tasty. Yeah, but it's it overindulged was, and mm. yeah, it's not like that. So it was prepared with bitter herbs. Mm. And we did a little experiment there in the youth class where we took the wormwood yeah. and we had everyone take a sip. Oh wow, so of, that this, they, of this, basically, yeah. So that they can taste what it means when they read it was prepared with bitter mm, herbs. Mm. It's not something that's enjoyable. No, it was to uh, depict sin, mm. you know, to yeah. show us what sin is. The same as the sanctuary message almost, mm. you know, it's a, it's a type for an anti-type. Yeah. It wasn't a feast, you know, they had a little piece of the, of the mm. Passover lamb with the bitter herbs on there. Yeah. Couldn't have been nice. No, it was a bitter experience. Yeah. The whole scene of the cross, what Jesus had to go through because of us. Yeah. But we're glad that he did go through it because now we can be saved yeah. and have eternal life. Yeah, we needed to experience uh, all of this, you know, the, the loss that he experienced, you know, mm. all the sinners that do not want to pick up the cross and follow him, mm. you know, and uh, we had to experience that through the type. Yeah. And uh, we just need to be faithful and we'll be with him in heaven soon. Mm. So we've got, now we've got the wormwood. Yeah. So you read it for us. <laughs> yeah, let's we've see. We've got the Artemisia, that's what they call it, Artemisia. Yeah. So let's see what wormwood can do for us. Mm. Because it contains unique compounds such as artemisinin that have antiviral effects, it's been used to naturally fight conditions including malaria. It also has the ability to treat fevers, inflammation, pain due to arthritis or headaches, and possibly other conditions. Mm. Some researchers even believe that Artemisia annua plant extracts and artemisinin derivatives may naturally help treat viruses. However, at this time, it isn't widely used in this capacity as its efficacy is still being examined. Mm. Malaria is a big problem here, you know, in the subtropical mm. areas. And, uh, and this, is, this is exactly what I used for, for pain and headaches and uh, sore throat inflammation. Mm. I mean, it's working. It really does work. Yeah, and like you said, you get used to this extremely bitter taste. Yeah, it's very bad in the beginning. And uh, just keep it as is. Don't add honey to it because it makes it worse. <laughs> but it is really... It is really healthy. And once you believe that, I mean, when I was younger, I, was, I used to say, man, I don't care, or, or rather be sick or whatever. No, you won't. Mm. Trust yeah. me, drink this. Yeah, it's a lot better to be healthy, <sighs> to be able to run around, to be energetic, yeah. than to sit there with your... Yes, with your congestion and all of that, mm. exactly. Okay, well, let's move on. We, we're spending quite a bit of time on this, but it's important. I'm just saying, let's, let's look at uh, the next little man here. This guy. What is this? Ginger. <laughs> ginger. Ginger is really good. So, <laughs> eating ginger can cut down on fermentation, constipation, and other causes of bloating and intestinal gas. Hmm. Wear and tear on cells, ginger contains antioxidants. These molecules help manage free radicals, which are compounds that can damage cells when their numbers grow too high. Is ginger anti-inflammatory? It is possible. Ginger contains over 400 natural compounds and some of these are anti-inflammatory. More studies will help us determine if eating ginger has any impact on conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis or respiratory inflammation. So, but yeah, I mean, ginger in its pure form, obviously, you know, mm. these roots and these herbs and, you know, these spices, whatever you want to call it, um, they, it's much better if it's in its raw form, you know, out of the earth. And yeah, uh, some of them are processed, I guess, or, or just, uh, I don't know, just kept on the shelf for a long time and, uh, and 
materials are used to to keep them fresh and things like that i think the best way is to actually grow it yourself because yeah. that's how you know you're getting the right the right stuff yeah. and all of these things are extremely cheap if you compare it to pills you have to buy at the pharmacy yeah medication that you need to buy yeah. things you have to drink if you have this in your backyard mm. it's quick and, and easy and, and these heal you from the inside out mm. whereas and I have to say this, it's true, but the, the pills and, and some of the drugs or most of the drugs you get in the pharmacies, they, they just, they just um, solve the problem temporarily. Mm, mm. You know, they just uh, solve the symptom, mm. but they don't, they don't strengthen you at the core. Mm. And that's why you need this. Yeah. You have a lot more negative effects from those yeah. medicines. Yeah. We know what that. you do when you drink this. Look, antibiotics that I get from the doctor, it works for when I'm sick. It mm. cures me, but it doesn't. It does in a certain way, but then it, it springs up somewhere else mm. and something else is wrong. I've seen this many times. Whereas with this, you yeah. don't have that. You don't have side effects with this. Mm. There's no side effects. So yeah, next one <coughs> is turmeric. turmeric. Turmeric is this guy. You get it obviously, in, when you buy it, you get it in powder form. This is much better if you put this in a blender um, with, the, I, I usually make a bomb. We call it a bomb. What is it? It's cayenne. It's a flu bomb. It's a flu yeah. bomb. It's cayenne pepper. It's turmeric. It's honey. It's garlic. Garlic. Yes. And, and lemon. And lemon. That's, that helps me a lot. And it strengthens your immune system. Mm. So turmeric. Uh, some research results show that people who have osteoarthritis reported less joint pain when eating turmeric in recipes. Turmeric's effect on mood disorders, depression and dementia have also been ex explored. But studies are small, so more research will reveal if this is uh, actual benefit. In addition to these conditions, research studies have shown some possible benefits of turmeric for inflammation, degenerative eye conditions, metabolic syndrome, arthritis, hyperlipidemia, cholesterol in the blood, which it is, anxiety, muscle soreness, and all these things, kidney health. Sure, there's a lot of things for this, but I think one needs to hone in on it a little bit and study it further eh, and see actually how it, how it, um, how it uh, complies or affects your body. Mm. As a, you know, and it, I know there's a lot of these uses. I use it a lot and it, and it works well. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, the second to last is your wild garlic. garlic. Wild garlic. Oh, here we go. Of course. This guy. This one is potent. It's really, really, yeah, it is a really potent one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do smell it. Yeah, and you can take this whole thing and just uh, put it in your blender. Yeah, so it's not, it's not for everyone, obviously, but it's, uh, it's really good and mm. you can feel the effects. So yeah, what are the health benefits here? Yeah, so let's read. Um, it protects against inflammation, increases immune function, natural antibiotic and antiviral properties, mm. antioxidants that may improve cognitive function and bone health, diuretic and detoxifying properties, lowers bad cholesterol to protect against heart disease. Sure. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not clued up as much as I w hope I, I was, but, um, but if you put all of these together, you start learning and what does this one do and what does this one do? And for certain um, targeted areas, you can then use, use the herbs and the roots that you need for those, for those issues. Oh, and, and if you don't look at these things, you'll never learn yeah. what it can help for. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have the, the final one is cayenne pepper. It's this guy. So we don't promote names or brands, but I mean, this is, cayenne pepper is really good and I go crazy if I don't have it in the home. It's very important for me. I put it in everything and if I'm feeling sick, um, I have to, you know, I use it a lot because it stimulates blood flow and all mm. of that as well. So I put it in my, in my food. I don't have to put it in my, the rest of the family, but I enjoy it and uh, in warm water sometimes as well. So let's read a bit about it. Besides providing some of the essential nutrients, cayenne pepper can relieve pain. The capsaicin in cayenne pepper has analgesic properties 
and works on the counter-irritation principle. Capsaicin initially irritates the nerve endings on the skin area where it is applied, but continued exposure desensitizes the nerve endings and blocks pain signals from that region temporarily. Capsaicin also depletes substance P, a natural chemical in the body that helps transmit pain signals. Other effects of cayenne pepper on the body include antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and mild blood thinning. Cayenne pepper is also thought to stimulate digestion and boost metabolism. Wow. Mm. So it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. And uh, I'm still learning a lot. This was, you know, collaboration just to get the most effective herbs and roots out there and put it on paper. But it's, um, it's very effective. Yeah. And I've taught, tested it. It really th is. This is basically just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So there's so many other things and I encourage everyone to go and look at that series Barbara O'Neill did and it's on our channel. It has 40, 40, 41 episodes mm. and mm. it covers basically every single disease you can think about. Yeah. I learned so, a lot from her yeah. as well, from her videos. Yeah. If you work through that, you'll be sorted. Yeah, and then we also have, we've got something else here, eh? Something you, you brought with as well. Yeah. Stinging nettle herb. Yeah, stinging nettle. Mm. It has so many advantages as well. It is filled with minerals. It helps <laughs> to be, or you can drink it as a tonic yeah. at the end of winter to boost your body. Yeah. You can drink it before winter. St stinging nettle. Stinging nettle. Stinging nettle. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it, in, it, uh, it uh, toxifies your blood, but it detoxifies huh? yeah. your so blood. Something that you won't think will help you has so many benefits. It's crazy. Yeah. Everything we walk past daily. Mm. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to, to learn you know, more and more about all these plants that, that we have yeah. in this area. Um, but again, to his question, um, you know, someone with, so he asked about chronic diseases. What will happen when we get to that point? When, when, you know, when we at the no buy, no sell and someone needs, they need chronic medicine and they need to buy it from the pharmacies because they've been buying it for how long? Mm. It's, it's difficult, but we should, we should try and get away, mm. try and, and familiarize ourselves with, with the natural remedies out there. And if we are called to move out of the cities, we are also asked to try and get away from all these mm. drugs that they sell us. Mm. I know you can't always get away from it. I, I get that. But we need to do what we can and be as natural mm. as we can. Mm. Yeah, find out if there is a possible replacement. Yeah. If there isn't and that time starts and you can't buy it, then you put your trust in God. You put your trust in God, mm. exactly. And God will decide. He knows the end from the beginning. Mm. He knows if you can, if you'll be able to endure mm. the, the last days. So, so we can't say, it's not, there's nothing in the Bible. What we do, we do have a few more points to, to go through and uh, we'll get to the bottom of his question. But, but yeah, that is, that's the first step. Get out, if you can, mm. as we've said before. As God leads the as way. As God leads the way. And uh, start familiarizing yourself with these amazing herbal and natural remedies and herbs. Mm. And, yeah, they, I've seen these, I've seen someone with cancer and my dad has seen it firsthand as well. Cancer, tumors everywhere, you know, that type of thing. The tumor dissipa or disappearing in months from natural mm. foods, organic foods and, and natural remedies. Mm. It is possible. So we have to, we have to get to that point. That is very, that's vital, that's first. Mm. Yeah, first and foremost. So we look at the time of trouble. So now we have, we have the no buy, no sell period in the little time of trouble. And then probation closes, mm. as we've mentioned. So what, what, what happens at this point? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a time as there never was. Yeah. So let's read it in Matthew 24, 21 where Jesus says, for then shall be great tribulations, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Hmm. 
So it's going to be extreme. Mm. We, won't, we won't even be able to imagine how bad it is going to be. No pen, Spirit of Prophecy says, no pen can describe mm. it. It's, uh, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't, you know, create fear in us. Nope. That's yeah. the one thing that's very important because it, it tends to. And I understand, even some days when I read, when I pray, and when I, you know, when I think about what's coming, I mean, I've got a little kid and all of that, but then that's my faith faltering almost. You know, mm. you have to get back to where your faith, where, where you can strengthen your faith. Mm. And you know, God knows the best for us and for our family. And if we are true to God, He will do, He will, do accordingly. He will ensure that the best possible end result will, yeah. will yield. Yeah. And, and we have this time to prepare ourselves. Mm. We have time to build our relationship with God. Because yeah. when that time comes, there's not going to be time left to prepare. Yeah. To build that relationship anymore. Mm. The time is now if you haven't started to build your relationship with God yet. Yeah. Those are the two elements. It's, and I'm not comparing it 100% with this, but here are the saints. Here are they who mm. keep the commandments of God. So doing mm. and have the faith of Jesus. Mm. So I'm, I'm not saying this is in the commandment, but this is important. You know, mm. we have to do, we have to put our foot in the Jordan, but we also have to have faith that yeah. what happens, you know, what happens down the line will be the best for mm. us, how sad it may be. Yeah. Okay, so let's read further. Spirit of prophecy. The Lord has shown me in vision repeatedly that it is contrary to the Bible to make any provision for our temporal wants in the time of trouble. So the time of trouble, I'm just reiterating, mm -hmm. is after close of probation. Yeah. I saw that if the saints have food laid up by them or in the fields in the time of trouble when sword, famine and pestilence are in the land, it will be taken from them by violent hands and strangers would reap their fields. Then will be the time for us to trust wholly in God and He will sustain us. I saw that our bread and water would be sure at that time and we should not lack or suffer hunger. The Lord has shown me that some of His children would fear when they see the price of food rising. I'm just saying this is prior. No, this is, you'll see. And they would buy food and lay it by for the time of trouble. Then in a time of need, I saw them go to their food and look at it, and it had bred worms and was full of living creatures and not fit for use. It takes me back to, to um, the manna mm. that fell. You know, it was a little bit of a different situation. They obviously had to gather double on the day before the Sabbath. And uh, if, they, if they gathered more, then it wouldn't last. Yeah, and, uh, and it was also filled with worms and mm. it wasn't edible. So, <clears throat> wow. So this just goes to show yeah. we make preparation before the time of trouble. Yeah. But when the time of trouble is there, yeah. we rely wholly on God. Yeah, when we have to flee to the mountains. Yes. If you flee to the mountains, you don't have a garden there that you can pluck from and eat. No. God will provide. Yeah. If manna has to fall from heaven, that will happen. Or yeah. we will be fed by the crows. Yeah, exactly. So God will provide in that time. Yeah, and uh, I think that's the time as well where a thousand will fall on your side, 10,000 on your right. Eh? We read further in the great controversy, the season of distress and anguish before us will require a faith that can endure weariness, delay and hunger a faith that will not faint, though severely tried. The time of trouble such as never was is soon to open upon us, and we shall need an experience which we do not now possess. There we go. And which many are too indolent to obtain. It is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality, but this is not true of this crisis before us. The most vivid presentation cannot reach the magnitude of the yeah. ordeal. If there was a time to prepare for what is coming, it was yesterday. It's yesterday. But if you didn't prepare yesterday, today is the day where you have to start. We have to start. Yeah. Putting our foot in the Jordan doesn't mean yeah. don't panic. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, <clears throat> there's a fine line. You know, it's, I'm saying don't panic, but heed the warning. Mm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Read the Bible. Get to know God. Yeah. Because if you know God, 
you know that you will not be deserted. You know that you won't be left alone. Mm. He will provide for you. He will take care of you. He will protect you. He will. Yeah, so what are God's promises to us during this time and after? Mm. So this time, referring to the small time of trouble, the buying and selling, no buying and selling, and then after, the close of probation. Psalm 37 verse 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. He will look after us. Isaiah 33, 16. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. And we also read in Patriarchs and Prophets, many never attain to the position that they might occupy because they wait for God to do for them that which he has given them power to do for themselves. Mm -hmm. All who are fitted for usefulness must be trained by the severest mental and moral discipline. And God will assist them by uniting divine power with human effort. Yeah, it's so, the same that we've yeah. said before. We so, need human effort. Yes, again, yeah. like we said, like you mentioned, when the great time of trouble starts, mm. that is when God will provide for us. Yeah. Before that time, we need to prepare and do everything we can yeah. to be prepared for what is to come. Even if it's, you know, currently, you know, because we know we, mm. we're close to that, that point, to the no buy, no sell, we know we are. Mm. And even if it's just gathering dry foods, yeah. hey? Uh, it is. Lentils <laughs> and uh, beans mm. and rice and all yeah. of these things that can uh, sustain us. Mm. Now we need to make provision for that as well. Uh, but past this time down. Look, there's not a clear distinction. Oh, we're moving into, uh, yeah. uh, you know, we're moving into the close of the, the great time of trouble. Okay, click. Now we need to be this. No, it's a, it's a gradual mm. uh, progression to that point. But for now, we're not there. We're not in the great time of trouble. So we need to do what we can. Yeah. yeah. And when, when the Lord says, come out of your, or get out of your house, don't grab anything and just run, just yeah. go. Listen, it's faith, yeah. faith-based. Okay, then we read in the ministry of healing, God is just as willing to restore the sick to health now as when the Holy Spirit spoke these words through the psalmist. And Christ is the same compassionate physician now that he was during his earthly ministry. In him, there is healing balm for every disease, restoring power for every infirmity. His disciples in this time are to pray for the sick as verily as the disciples of old prayed and recoveries will follow for the prayer of faith shall save the sick. We have the Holy Spirit's power, the calm assurance of faith that can claim God's promises. Mm. As we were reading, I was just thinking, where's our faith? <laughs> you know, and all of us, every one of us, you know, this is such a good question, Philip. I, I really just want to reiterate again. It's a, it helps us to prepare for this time mm. yeah, ahead of us. Yeah, to ponder. Mm. Am I ready for it? Yeah. Where is my trust? Do I trust earthly things or is it with God? You hit, you hit it on the nail. Mm. Yes, it is. You know, is it trusting this? Is it trusting the medicines? I, mean, I have to say it again. Are we trusting the medicines of this world or are we trusting the medicine of God? which God created. Mm. Yeah. Okay, then, then we ask the question, the tough question, mm. what will happen to those who are unable to endure the time of trouble? Mm. But again, there's hope in yeah. this even. He knows, so we're reading in Councils of Health, he knows whether or not those for whom petitions are offered would be able to endure the trial and test that would come upon them if they lived. He knows the end from the beginning. Many will be laid away to sleep before the fiery ordeal of the time of trouble shall come upon our world. The Lord has often instructed me that many little ones are to be laid away before the time of trouble. We shall see our children again. We shall meet them and know them in the heavenly courts. Sure. Hmm. It's, it's tough whenever you lose someone. Yeah. But where is our focus? Is our focus heaven driven? Heaven or bound, yeah. Is, yeah. is it heaven bound or 
Are we focusing on the here and now? Are we looking no. at a future here on this earth? That is the thing. And that's the, the tough question because and I speak with a lot of my friends as well. This is life for most, mm -hmm. you know, but, but we should just be passing through. This is not our home. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I'm talking to myself here as well because it, I have to constantly say this to myself, mm -hmm. you know, if, we, if we're also not watching and praying, we're not seeing mm -hmm. these events unfolding, then this is our home. Yeah. Then we're not, then we'll be completely crushed when a loved one passes away. Mm. You know, how can this be? How can God allow this? Yeah. But if we, yeah, but if we heaven focused and we see everything unfolding, that's why God knows. He knows who can, you mm. know, endure what, or, or he knows the end from the beginning. So he knows that we can endure certain yeah. things. And if he and if you allow someone to pass away and we can see we are so close to the end, mm. our faith will be strengthened. Mm. We'll see him again or her again. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and <clears throat> is my faith strong enough at this stage that if I lose a loved one, that I won't turn from God? Mm. Yeah, that has been a, that's a very important question and something I've had to struggle with my whole life as well. Mm. You know, we, and that's all comes down to faith and how, st how strong our faith is. Mm. Yeah. So um, this, is, this basically says the same. I just want to read at the bottom there. This is another reason why we should always say after our earnest petition, Never, nevertheless, not my will, but thine, O Lord, be done. Such a petition will never be registered in heaven as a faithless prayer. Mm. Yeah. We, we need to think of what is important at the moment. Mm. Why are we here? We've, we've, we've spoken about this as well. We're here to judge between Satan and Christ. Who is, mm. who is right? Yeah. Who is, you know, um, who is just? Yeah, and that's why we're here. We are here. We are fighting for mm. something and it's for, for God. Yeah. And a lot of people sit with the questions, what's going to happen? What should I do? Um, this way, need, do I need to go this way? Do I need to go that way? Mm. But we need to do everything we can yeah. and leave the rest to God. Yeah. We shouldn't be focused on earthly things, on an earthly future, mm. but we need to look towards God and towards the next life. Yeah, and how do we build? How do we build our faith? Because that's always the, mm. the question. You know, we have to we, we have to spend time in the, His Word mm. and on our knees. We know Daniel prayed mm. three times a day. You know, we we yeah, and um, and we know that by knowing who He is and knowing His character, we know we know His love for us. Then we know that everything He does is for the good of of mm. his children. Mm. Yeah. So I hope, I hope Philip, I hope that answers uh, your question and I hope everyone else, as much as the two of us have learned something today about this topic and I hope we prepare and that we are mm. faithful till the end. Yeah. yeah. Irrespective of what's going to happen, how difficult it might be, let our trust be in God. Yeah. I quite enjoyed the discussion um, and this wonderful bit of tea. So, if you haven't tasted wormwood yet, go out to the shop, buy some, and share this experience with us. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, anything you're not sure about, please send us a video um, to truth at clashofminds.com or send it in over WhatsApp um, on the office number that pops up here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, yeah, yeah, we look forward to seeing those questions. We look forward to mm. studying it, answering it. Yeah. Ah. yeah, so let's end off with a word of prayer. Let's. Our Heavenly Father, when we look at the world out there, everything seems bleak and the future doesn't seem a lot better. And I ask that you will be with us and that you will guide us so that we can strengthen our relationship with you so that we can trust in you that no matter what comes our way that we will be prepared 
and that we will not lose hope, that we will not lose trust, but that we will keep our eyes fixed upon you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you.